Let me take you back to the beginning of this trip. It'll only take a minute. Well, a minute and three seconds, I think it is. Welcome back to my channel. And for the regular visitors, the irregular visitors, and the new visitors, welcome. And I hope you enjoy what I have in store for you today. I'm taking you inside the castle just to show you what a beautiful piece of architecture and style this is. So um, sit back, relax and enjoy the interior. After a rather adventuresome climb, we were welcomed by a, a, a guide and he pointed us in the right direction so that we could get some of the best views and the most interesting sights. <laughs> the previous video, I also shared some information about St. Michael's Mount. Here, some fresh information. But before I burble on and on, just have a look at the interior of this beautiful castle. Many antiquities comprising plate, armour, paintings and furniture are preserved at the castle. The French have Mont Saint-Michel and the British have St. Michael's Mount. The French have a village and a castle and a monastery and the island is a higher cone-shaped island. Today there is a permanent road access. St. Michael's Mount is smaller and is less built on. It is one of 43 unbridged tidal islands to which one can walk from mainland Britain at a low tide and reach by boat at high tide. Its Cornish language name, literally, the grey rock in a wood, may represent a folk memory of a time before Mount Bay was flooded, indicating a description of a mount set in woodland. Remains of trees have been seen at low tides following storms at the beach, Peronitho. Part of the island was designated as a site of special scientific interest in 1995 for its geology.
The chapel of St. Michael, a 15th century building, has an embattled tower, one angle of which is a small turret, which served for guidance of ships. The chapel is extra diocesan and continues to serve the Order of St. John by permission of Lord St. Levin. Chapel Rock on the beach marks the site of a shrine dedicated to the Virgin Mary, where pilgrims pause to worship before ascending the mount. The communities which inhabited the island was never large. By 1811, there were 53 houses and four streets. The pier was extended in 1821, and the population peaked in the same year when the island had 221 people. There were three schools, a Wesleyan chapel, three public houses, mostly used by visiting sailors. And following major improvements to nearby Penzance Harbour and the existence of a railway to Penzance in 1852, the village went into decline and many of the houses and other buildings were demolished. During the 18th and 19th centuries, the structure of the castle was romanticised. A short underground narrow gauge railway was constructed in about 1900. It was used to bring goods up to the castle and take away rubbish. In 2018, the tramway was reported as being still in regular use, perhaps not every day, and is not open to the general public, although a small stretch is visible at the harbour. in and out of that castle, everywhere there was a door. And sometimes the rooms were just a wee bit busy with people, so we just decided to hop outside. Anyway, we asked about the twigs of herbs on the chairs, and it was to discourage people to sit on the furniture. I thought that was rather lovely. So much friendlier than one of those printed, uh, computer printed notes saying, please don't sit on the furniture. Very subtle this was.
In 1954, Francis Cecil St. Auburn, third Baron of St. Levin, gave most of St. Michael's Mount to the National Trust, together with a large endowment fund. The St. Auburn family retained a 999-year oh, lease to inhabit the castle and a license to manage the public viewing of its historic rooms. This is managed in conjunction with the National Trust. And from what I gathered while listening here and there to various guides, I believe that there will be a change of generation on the island. Due to the build, levels and sometimes difficult access, the older generation will make way for the new as the family residency and traditions will continue for years to come on the island. And believe me, it's worth visiting. It was time for us to return to our holiday address because tomorrow we're moving on and there was a lot of packing to do. But we did decide to have a really touristy and gentle drive home, just enjoying the countryside for just that little bit longer. So um, this is about it for Cornwall and we're off to Wales next. <laughs>